LEGO fans, I'm back with another classic LEGO Harry Potter restoration, speed build and review video. This time we're sticking with the Goblet of Fire theme and we're setting sail with the Proud Sons of Durmstrang. Well to be fair we only have one son and his teacher but you get the idea. Today I'm going to be tearing apart, providing a very long overdue clean, speed building and reviewing Set number 4768, the Durmstrang ship from LEGO Harry Potter! This set was released in 2005 to accompany Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. With a surprisingly low part count of only 550 pieces, this recreates the magical ship used by Durmstrang Institute to reach Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry for the 1994 Triwizard Tournament. Retailing in 2005 for 40 Great British Pounds or 50 US Dollars, this 550-piece set includes two minifigures, Professor Igor Karkarov and Victor Crumb, this time in his human form. You may recall that last time we saw Victor Crumb, he was half shark. The HP 077 Victor Crumb human form minifigure is worth about $14, and the HP 076 Professor Igor Karkarov resells for about $18. US dollars. But if you were doing your Christmas shopping at Target back in 2005, you were in for a treat. There was a second version of this ship which included four bonus minifigures. Ron Weasley with the sleepy face who also appears in 5378 Hogwarts Castle and 4762 Rescue from the Mer People. Also appearing in 4762 Rescue from the Mer People was a sleepy version of Hermione Granger. The bonus also included Albus Dumbledore in a sand blue outfit who appeared in 4767 Harry and the Hungarian Horntail and also in the 5378 Hogwarts Castle 3rd edition. Finally for bonus minifigures we have Harry Potter in the tournament uniform he wore during the third task. You'll find this version of Harry Potter in set number 4766 Graveyard Jewel which is still on my shopping list. So if you were lucky enough to find one of these in Target in 2005, you weren't just getting the two minifigures. Based on resale figures today, these four minifigures add about $44 of value. Not bad for a $50 set. This may look all shipshape and Bristol fashion now, but wind the clock back a couple of days and it was filthy. The Durmstrang ship has been sitting on a shelf high above my fireplace for far too long. In fact, I think a colony of Acromantula might have moved in. Filming in 4K is great, but it shows up every speck of dust. I don't think any amount of aero duster is going to make this right. I couldn't possibly show it to you like this, all covered in dust, so there was only one thing to do. It looks like it's bath time for Victor Crumb and Igor Karkaroff. And so with the ship fully dismantled, it's time to give everything a good clean. You've seen me do this before, so we're going to rush through this real quick. First of all, we're going to make a solution of warm water and a biological detergent such as Tide. There are some tiny elements in this set such as the gold-plated studs. Those are also really expensive to replace, so be sure not to let them go down the drain. After soaking for a few hours and agitating with a wooden spoon, rinse off all of the Lego elements with plenty of clean water. Drain everything as well as you can in a colander, and then spread the bricks out on a towel to dry out. As with many of the ship builds, there are some decorative sails. I wouldn't recommend washing these in detergent, but you can give them a rinse under the tap to get the dust off. I'm going to go ahead and rebuild set number 4768, the Durmstrang ship, and today this is going to be a 60 second speed build!
And here is the completed 4768, the Durmstrang ship from LEGO Harry Potter. Apart from a few faded bricks, it's looking pretty good for a 15 year old set. Build time today was 1 hour and 15 minutes, and considering the size of the finished build, it was pretty easy to put together. Of course, a good amount of the size of this build comes down to those hull pieces. Will it float or won't it? We'll find out later in the video. We're going to start out by taking a detailed look around the Durmstrang ship. We're also going to check out some of the decorated interiors, try and make the interactive function look cool, and then we'll take a look at the Durmstrang minifigures, the bonus target minifigures, and then we'll see if this thing floats. We'll do that last, otherwise things could get really messy. Durmstrang Institute is one of the three largest wizarding schools in Europe alongside Bovatons and Hogwarts. It's located in the far north and accepts students from as far away as Bulgaria. Other famous students of Durmstrang include Gellert Grindelwald. He was remembered as the world's most dangerous dark wizard until this guy stuck his nose in, or I guess didn't stick his nose in. Well, I guess technically Voldemort didn't have a nose, but you know what I mean. History lessons aside, it's time to raise the anchor and set sail. Despite the modest 550 piece part count, this is actually a really big set. From bow to stern, the Durmstrang ship is about 20 inches long, which is almost two feet. It's also pretty tall thanks to those masts which extend about 20 inches into the air. That would certainly give me vertigo. The bulk of the hull is made up of those four elements which will hopefully give it some buoyancy. There's another large prefabricated piece which snaps onto the front for the bow. Dangling from the bow we have the ship's anchor which unfortunately doesn't have a winch mechanism. I did modify this slightly by adding a clip to hold the anchor exactly where I wanted it. Without that it just kind of dangles off the side of the ship and that wasn't really the aesthetic I wanted. Rather than using string which can degrade over time, LEGO has used one of these really nice black plastic chains. It would have been nice to have had a winch mechanism, but instead we get this post to attach the chain to. I sense also that the bow of the ship could have been used for something more fancy. There are definitely points here for connecting other elements. The only other set to use this part was Captain Redbeard's pirate ship from 2004. That includes one of these bow pieces in brown which is decorated with a skull. Elongating the ship and giving it a wow factor is this mast which is sticking out at an angle. Around the base of the first mast we have some decorative handrails or something. I can't find any functional need for the red pieces but it does add some decoration. We also have quite a few of the pale blue bricks which discolour really easily in sunlight. There were a bunch of these discoloured bricks in the Rescue from the Mer People set which I reviewed last week. The first mast is set at a jaunty angle and we are going to be coming back to that in just a couple of minutes. Focusing on the deck first of all we have one of these modified 1x2s with a post. I'm not entirely sure what that's for but you could use it to hang the chain for the anchor. Health and safety doesn't appear to be a priority on board the Durmstrang ship. You'll notice for example there are no handrails and instead we get a diving board. Apparently Victor Crumb could often be seen diving off the ship into the Great Lake. That actually makes this quite an appropriate addition. This Victor doesn't look ready for a swim so let's do a quick switcheroo. This is not the best interactive feature in the world but if you loosely attach a minifigure to the end of the diving board, you can catapult him into the Great Lake. I'll give him an 8 out of 10 for that. Moving around to the back of the ship things start to get a lot more decorative. On the side of the ship we have two shields bearing crests. The one on the right I definitely recognise as the Durmstrang School Crest. The one on the left however is less familiar. I don't know whether this is specific heraldry or whether it's a part that LEGO just used in other sets. In fact a quick check on Bricklink reveals that this is used in 12 sets including quite a few castle sets. That would indicate that this is a generic piece. Underneath the shields we have three buttresses which help to support the upper part of the ship. One particularly nice feature about this set is the use of chrome antique brass plates. These are used very infrequently and if you lose them they cost about $2 each to replace. It may look like we're missing one in the middle but this is absolutely right and as it should be. As we approach the bow of the ship you'll notice lots of these small arched pieces and even more of those light blue elements. Some of these have passed the test of time better than others. You'll notice some discoloration on the 1x2 on the left here. Hidden away underneath we have this sloping structure here which helps to support the Durmstrang living accommodation. 
Also on each side for decoration we have these tan elephant tail elements. When it comes to weight distribution the Durmstrang ship looks very back heavy. That's definitely going to give me palpitations when it comes to trying to float this in a bathtub. Before we head inside let's finish up taking a look around on deck. There is a cargo hold which comes with a convenient handle but sadly there's nothing inside. I guess you could put whatever or whoever you want down there. In fact it might be a good place to hide Draco. The other thing you'll find up on deck is the base of the extra long mast that sits in the middle of the ship. We'll come back to that in a couple of minutes but before then let's take a look around inside. There are actually two levels of accommodation on board the Durmstrang ship. We've got this space down at deck level and then a much more elegant structure which sits on top. You'll notice this has hinges and if you have any kind of OCD it's really going to tick you off that the rear mast is not aligned with the other two. In fact it's offset slightly so that those hinges can do what they need to do. To make it a little bit easier to poke around inside the ship there are some modular components here. First of all you can lift off the top living accommodation. Secondly this top deck can be removed and then the other piece just simply lifts away. The interior cabin at deck level is not the most exciting part of the build. There is a table which opens up to reveal a secret compartment. I was hoping there would be some treasure or a nice little easter egg but the reality is very boring. What we do get instead is a small table lamp and a 1x2 printed tile which looks like a letter. On the far wall we have a black broomstick and on the other wall a black staff which will come in useful for the Durmstrang dance. It's very much like the brown staff which Igor Karkaroff is holding. The only other thing worth pointing out here is the rather nice red window complete with gold trellis. While we do have the roof off check out the symmetry of this build. We have a matching set of shields on either side of the ship as well as those buttresses and the antique gold studs. With the upper deck of the ship replaced we can take a look at the ship's wheel. Mickey I thought I said no. Bad Mickey Mouse don't you have a Star Wars movie to go and work on? Yes we have one of these ship's wheel elements which spins. There's also a nautical map which my son has attached upside down and a lantern to light up the map as the sons of Durmstrang get well and truly lost. Also on the bridge we have some rather nice red railings and a step stool to help Igor Karkaroff see over the wheel. For when the crew inevitably get lost we have another piece of navigational equipment in the form of this ship's sextant. Instinctively when you build this set you want to place the mast in the middle but if you do that it stops you doing this. You can actually completely open up the Durmstrang living quarters and appreciate the beautiful symmetry. If it wasn't for the red and blue pieces you might think this was Hogwarts. We have some more of these arched windows complete with the gold trellis shuttering. There are also supports jutting out of the side and on top of these we have some rather impressive spires. These are really eye catching decorations and especially so because of the chromed dishes on the top. Underneath these are decorated with a transparent cylinder and a transparent dish piece. I almost feel like I'm back in Berlin looking up at the TV tower. There are a pair of decorative front doors on the front but when you open these up you still can't really see anything inside. Thankfully the whole thing opens up and you've got lots of stuff to take a look at. It appears these Durmstrang dudes don't travel light. The contents are a bit random but over on the left hand side we have some kind of bookcase complete with magnifying glass and a blue chalice. In fact that's rather a nice colour you don't see that colour very often. There is an intriguing red book and I know these often contain hidden secrets but on this occasion the book is empty. Over on the other side we have more randomness including a frying pan over a flame, a bat which has hopefully not been hanging out with any pangolins, a clear cylinder with some feathers in the top, a blue magical flame and a 2x2 printed tile showing a scroll which has writing on it which is completely illegible. Random as this salubrious selection of student stuff may be, I do think it's cool that we've got this removable cabin with secrets hidden inside. Before we move on to the minifigures and answer Pennywise's favourite question, let's take a look at these impressive masts. The central mast is supported by two long pieces of Lego rigging. I'm sure a broomstick would be a safer option but sometimes it's fun to live dangerously. The central mast is actually so tall that it's made up of two different sections joined in the middle. Towards the top of all three masts we have this cross member which I guess is meant to hold sails. If you look at some of the illustrations in the book or even take a look at the movie we definitely have more substantial sail presence than we get on the Lego model. 
The sails on this ship are very thin printed pieces of fabric, and they simply dangle from a pole which is attached to the top of the mast. Also towards the top of the first two masts you're going to find crow's nests. These are made up from these rather nice mid blue bucket elements. These are just deep enough so you can stand a minifigure inside but I'm not honestly sure that I would be that brave. So that was the fantastic Durmstrang ship and before we potentially sink this thing, let's take a look at those minifigures. If you bought this set anywhere else but Target stores in the USA, you got just two minifigures. Professor Igor Karkaroff and Victor Crumb in his human form. If you were doing a Target run back in 2005 you would have picked up four bonus minifigures. Ron Weasley with the sleepy expression, Hermione Granger who's also taking a nap, Albus Dumbledore in his sand blue outfit, and Harry James Potter in his tournament uniform. Including only two minifigures in a set of this size is particularly mean. With a price tag of $50 on the date of release I would have expected a couple more. When you take into consideration the six minifigures you got with the Target version, it's actually really good value for money. A set that would have cost you $50 back in 2005 now contains $76 of minifigures alone. In fact that $50 investment back in 2005 if you'd have kept it mint in box would now be worth $230. And you can add about another $40 if you've got the bonus Target minifigures. Back to the two minifigures that LEGO intended to put in the set we have Igor Karkaroff and Victor Krum. You'll notice that both of them are carrying sticks. These are Bolivian marching sticks and made from the charred remains of the banyan tree. In reality I've no idea but I do know in the movie they put on a great show dancing around with these sparking sticks. Except for the face these minifigures are identical. Because Victor's facial print also appears on another minifigure he's worth slightly less. They both have plain grey legs which is a very common element. The torso print is more unique and shows a fur lined jacket. I particularly like the buttons which seem to be made out of claws or maybe teeth. It really makes these characters look badass. The headgear is a black Mongolian style hat which really suits the character nicely. This was actually used for a couple of other minifigures from the Orient Expedition range. It has some really nice detailing including the fluting around the front and the back and there is a hole on the top there in case you want to stick a feather in the top. The other feature I really like is the ear flaps which keep your ears warm on the coldest days. It's kind of ironic of course that minifigures don't have ears. On the positive side it means we can say anything we want about them. Igor Karkaroff the headmaster of Durmstrang Institute was previously a Death Eater serving Lord Voldemort. He did time in Azkaban but snitched on fellow Death Eaters to the Wizengamot in exchange for his crimes being pardoned. Karkaroff fled when Voldemort returned but was hunted down by his former comrades and murdered in the summer of 1996. The facial expression is great, it's very sinister, very stern and I love the goatee beard. Victor Crumb's facial expression is the same one that we had in the Rescue from the Mer People set. Victor Crumb was born in 1976 which was a great year. He was well known to the students of Hogwarts because he was actually the Bulgarian national Quidditch team seeker when he was still at school. As a bonus fact Victor Crumb attended the wedding of Fleur de la Cour and Bill Weasley in 1997. I'm not going to go over the bonus minifigures in too much detail as technically speaking they're not part of the Durmstrang ship but I thought it would be nice to take a very quick look. This version of Ron and Hermione both feature in the Rescue from the Mer People set. They're both wearing their Gryffindor school uniform and if you check out the facial expression you'll see that both are asleep. This represents Ron and Hermione in a deep sleep at the bottom of the Great Lake waiting for the champions to come and rescue them. They do have alternate expressions but quite frankly these are utterly creepy. I don't know what happened to Ron but it looks like he just got hit by a bat bogey hex. Dumbledore looks as resplendent and regal as ever in this sand blue outfit. He also appears in 4767 Harry and the Hungarian Horntail and the 5378 Hogwarts Castle. Both of those sets are in my to review list so we'll definitely be taking a look at Dumbledore very soon. Finally we have HJP that boy what lived and he looks fantastic in this panelled Triwizard Tournament Champion outfit. He also appears in 4768 Graveyard Duel but that's on my shopping list. Like the other Triwizard Tournament versions of Harry Potter we do have a decoration on the back which says Potter and a star in gold lettering. Although this is a superb and very collectible set the minifigure selection in the standard version is pretty poor. 
From the designer's perspective, I can kind of understand why that would be. I mean, other than Igor Karkaroff and Viktor Krun, there were really no standout characters among the other Durmstrang students. The bonus minifigures definitely make the Target exclusive version more desirable, but they do not really belong to the set. Before we wrap up this video, we need to answer the question everybody wants to know. Does the Durmstrang ship float? To the Herbert bathroom! So this is the Herbert bathroom, and as you can tell, it's really echoey and it smells of bleach. Well, to be honest, everywhere in the world smells like bleach at the moment. Just in case anything goes wrong, we do have Malfoy manning the rescue boat. Will it float or won't it float? Let's find out. It would seem we don't have quite enough water in the bath. Stand by, folks. OK, now is the moment of truth. That'll be a no. Unfortunately for Draco Malfoy, the same can't be said for many figures. How on earth am I going to explain this to Lucius and Narcissa? So that was set number 4768, the Durmstrang ship from LEGO Harry Potter. This is one of only four Harry Potter sets released in 2005, but it is a stonker. I don't know whether I like it quite as much as Rescue from the Mer People, possibly because the minifigure selection isn't as good in this set. But if you were lucky enough to get the bonus minifigures, that certainly does help to balance this out a little bit. So I learned a couple of things today. Firstly, the Durmstrang boat does not float. And secondly, Lucius and Narcissa Malfoy aren't too impressed that I killed their son Draco. Hey ho, things happen! In used condition with just the two minifigures, this is worth about $140. But more importantly, if you're trying to collect all of the LEGO Harry Potter sets, this is absolutely priceless. I'm getting there, but I've still got a few to go. I guess the question is whether LEGO will ever do this set again. We did of course recently get the Bobatons carriage arrival at Hogwarts, but to be fair that had never been done before. LEGO ship builds are always very popular, and I could see a Durmstrang ship selling well. If you're lucky enough to have one of these, then do treat it well, because its value is only going to go up. And if you've got a graveyard duel you want to sell, then I am all ears. I hope you enjoyed this classic LEGO Harry Potter restoration, speed build and review video. If you did, a thumbs up is always appreciated because let's face it, a handshake is out of the question. You'll find a load more classic Harry Potter videos on my channel, and I have many more of them to come. So be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be the first in the know. Thanks a million for checking out today's video, stay healthy, stay safe, and we'll see you on the next build video.